Well, there's pounds. I can't chat and then so. Oh. Oh. Waiting. <laughs> Is it streaming? Probably yeah. We're, we're it's gonna be like sixteen point. seconds <laughs> delay. Uh, yeah, you can't watch on the internet. Hey, welcome to the bilge tank. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Looking away. Chatting. It's done. It's done. Oh. Yeah, we've been live for like ten seconds, and people are just saying, oh, hi, hi. "These guys know nothing about internet broadcasting." <laughs> well, the answer to that, viewers, is um, no. Oh no, we're so, up now. I'm getting let's up. Let's go. Getting the stream. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, let's yeah. hope we've got some audio. We have, in fact, been live for about 10 seconds looking like complete yeah. total columns. So. <laughs> wow. Yay. As long as there's nobody watching, it's all right, though. That makes it fine. No, no be important. Yeah. Nothing is kept on the internet. Right. Hi, Les. Hi, Matt. Hi, um, uh, Gregory. <laughs> Cover it. Cover it with anything. Hi, Ben. Ben Gray. <laughs> right. Yay. Okay. Five, four, <laughs> three. <laughs> Welcome to the Bilge Tank. Uh, this is the first of our weekly shows where we're going to talk about various aspects of the Raspberry Pi and Maker community. Uh, I've got Paul Hi. and Bill. Oh. Uh, and today, there's not really a lot happening today, so um, there won't be much to talk about apart from <gasps> this. The new official Raspberry Pi display. So, I'm very excited about that. Yep, crushing the Raspberry Pi website as we speak. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> been up and down all day, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a mess. Never mind. Um, so, tell me, John, what is the Bilge Tank? The Bilge Tank is basically, well, it's a live stream show. Um, we're going to try to structure it a little bit, uh, have a subject each week that we talk about. Um, we'd be really keen to kind of take your questions on Twitter um, so we can kind of answer things throughout the show. Or um, in the live chat. Or which in is the live chat. Kind of chat somewhere in we have live yeah. that corner. That yeah. corner of yeah. your screen. Matt yeah. Bryce just somewhere says, got it. Can we increase the volume a little bit? We can just talk louder, I think. Yeah, or, or you could turn the volume up. <laughs> oh, yes, you could turn the volume yeah. up on your computer. If you turn the volume up on your computer, then, then we don't have to turn the volume up on the whole or internet. Or sit really close. Yeah. Is, it, is it genuinely too quiet, Matt? Because <clears throat> we can probably do something about that. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben Gray is another vote for volume, so well, perhaps... Fine, we'll something. turn volumes up. Volume is being turned up. There we go. Hope you're happy now. <laughs> is that a bit louder? Hello! Right, there we go. Oh, this latency okay. is killing me. <laughs> it's so confusing. <laughs> this, this is how it works on the internet. I know, I know. It's not just, you can't avoid this. Yeah. So, yeah, Bilge Tank, we're going to talk about interesting stuff and just kind of, instead of us being hiding behind the Twitter avatar and pretending to be pirates, we're actually going to be ourselves and kind of give you our take on stuff, try and do more about the whole learning and making things like displays a bit more kind of obvious so people can go hey that's what that is and it's just just those trying to make complex things seem a bit simpler and kind of like okay that's not that hard i should give that a try for you guys out there on the internet right so let's talk about the official display um, which was released this morning very exciting it's um 800 by 480 pixels uh, has a custom drive board and we made a, like a nice stand for it it's not very uh, useful without a stand so that kind of sorts that out yeah you can um, use it without a stand but this is kind of glass here which you know if you have to be a bit butter fingered <laughs> funny story <laughs> i was proving to connor how strong this was uh by bending the corner and tore it straight off so yeah, yeah. you thought it was metal to be fair <laughs> i did think it was made of metal it turned out uh, not to be metal but i've told connor to take more care of his things in future so yeah. um, that should be okay so yeah, currently this is this is kind of going great guns. Everybody's kind of getting these because it's been anticipated for so long now. And if you go to the Pi website, there is a brilliant long post from Gordon about all the trials they've been through getting this to market. And one of the big things has been EMC, so that you know your display here doesn't turn into an unintentional radio or microwave or something, um, and just plays nicely with other other electronics. And because it's a bare board and because there's some very high speed signals there, um, it can in unintentionally turn into kind of a bit of a noisy, noisy kind of piece of electronics. But through very good design and some electronic engineering, it's kind of way beyond that kind of level. Maybe not John's, but kind of for me, yeah, no. Um, they made it so it now is class B compliance, which is the best class. And so that's now ready, tested approved and released and you can get it on the Pimeroni store with this nice stand 
or the swag store you know go find it there and it's good it feels nice um we're gonna have a little demo of it switched on at some point i think yeah definitely what about that phil we have got one switched on on the desk, With but Phil's I need to get relocate the keyboard into it. Yeah, I've got a fancy ghetto power. Okay, while well, Phil does that, we'll kind of talk about what else it does. So as well as being this 800 by 400 80 pixel display, it's also got a multi-touch capacitive touchscreen, which can take up to 10 inputs uh, on it. 10, 10 touches, presses. yeah. So there's this great T-Bot demo um, that I'm sure Gordon will release on GitHub at some point which shows you how to do that and you can rotate photos and do kind of multiple finger things that you do on like all the best tablets out there. It works in Raspbian as well. So they've mm -hmm. got like mouse driver support for the touchscreen in Raspbian now. So um, yeah, you should update great. your Raspbian yeah, to the latest version always when new stuff comes out. App to get, pseudo app to get update, pseudo app to get upgrade and you should be fine. Reboot. Probably uh, yeah. the most interesting thing about the new screen is the fact it uses the DSi connector on the Pi. Um, that's been there since the very first versions of the Raspberry Pi. And I think I read a quote where Evan said they spent something like half a million dollars on those connectors, and obviously there was nothing to plug in there, so yeah, it's kind of nice they found a home now. Yeah, that's like over six million connectors that have been doing nothing for the last three years, and now suddenly they're, they're kind of, uh, they're all now useful. As of 9am this morning, they suddenly became useful things. You owe it to your Pi to give that DSL connector a home. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know what? Cube zoom. Cube zoom. <laughs> oh yeah. man, I love the cube zoom. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to review that then, <laughs> until we get really bored of it. Oh, it is the comic sounds of video display, processing. But you can actually see that in action now. There you go. Phil's done ooh, a bit ooh, of a ooh, kind ooh, of ghetto ooh. power setup here. Oh, the the no. only kind of downside, I guess, with this display is that you need to you need to somehow get transfer power from the display driver to the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, their solution, uh, initially at least, is to use a couple of GPIO leads. So you basically bridge between the driver board and the GPIO, um, which is okay. We're looking at some options to create a USB splitter, which will be slightly tidier. Um, but yeah, Phil's, Phil's prototyping that. We don't expect everyone to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the screen's got a good viewing angle, and it, generally, it genuinely feels like a nice screen to use. It's kind of the, th the fonts are big enough, and it's just big enough, and it's quite handy, and it's very portable. And the whole thing just feels nice. So it's a tidy piece of things. And if you get one of these nice colourful cases, then it's even better, obviously. Um, I found, you know, when I first saw this, I wasn't actually that excited. I thought it was a bit a bit of a weird shape. Um, bit too, too small, wide, maybe. bit too short. Yeah. But since I've been using it, I really love it because it slides underneath my monitors. So I kind of have this hooked up to my development pie. And when I'm done with that, I can just slide it back. It goes under my screens that are on like Baser mount arms. And because it's so shallow, I can just slide it under there and get it out of the way, which I think is, is pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Someone also asked me today on Hacker News, I think, on the Raspberry Pi display post um, about why I didn't have an on-off switch, which is obviously a question that's asked about the Pi a fair bit. Um, and his actual use case was that he wants to run Pi headless, but sometimes have the screen. Uh, what he doesn't want is to have the backlight constantly active um, while he's running the Pi. Um, so I've had a chat with Gordon at the Foundation, and he says that in a, within a couple of weeks or so there will be software control for the display, so you'll be able to turn it off from software and re-enable it with a tap on the screen. This, thing, this thing's got an ABR on it, hasn't it? The driver board there yeah, has the an ABR. Yeah, the driver board has like a, a controller for the backlight, <coughs> PWM and stuff. Yeah, and they got these I squared C headers next to the power headers on the driver board. So oh, I found out what they were for. Yeah. Yeah, on the original Pi Bs, the I squared C lines weren't weren't connected to the DSi connector. Ah. So you don't need those with a B plus, uh, A plus, or two. If yep. you have an original model B Pi, you actually have to hook up the I squared C bus from the, the, the connector on the display itself, right. um, which you can do with GPIO leads again. So it's, you know, it's dead simple. But And they're included as well? Yeah, they come in the kit. Yeah, it comes part of it. So that's great. That's a neat little solution. And um, we've been waiting a long time, and now it's here. Yeah. I mean, we were, I guess we work mostly in the terminal, and for that, it's genuinely great because it, it's quite a low dot pitch and a lot of people kind of complain, oh, it's not retina, it's not high resolution, it's not full HD. But actually, when you boot into a terminal, it's just about perfect. So Yeah, I like it. It's also 48 quid for two. Yeah, you can't beat yeah, that. Basically, for hackable electronics. Cheap. That's include, hackable including UK code. taxes, right? So yeah. it is genuinely very cheap. Yeah. Um, oh, I, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's really nice. I've been using one for quite a while. I've been using one here for quite a while. And, uh, yeah. Definitely part of my process now. It's a good screen. Yep. Get one. 
So Matt in the YouTube comments has asked, can they see a screen without the case on? So I'm the um, Bill is right. <laughs> making that happen. The case. He's, he's we'll right. see his progress here. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's just watch Bill dismantling this for a while. Perhaps we could have some music. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, do we have anything that's not copyrighted because YouTube will totally shut us down? Mm. <laughs> not yet. Not we, could yet. A, we could have a preview of our Bill's tank <coughs> video that didn't quite make the cut this week. But, yeah. You know. Maybe we could kind of get some vamp music, some elevated music, but Ooh. kind of twist it for... We could sing. There's no way can shut us down for that, surely. I really, <laughs> I really think they probably could and should. Instead of the girl from Ipanema, we could do like <laughs> the girl from Ooty Bridge. Mm. <laughs> oh, I need another <laughs> twist on that screw. <laughs> and the other one. <laughs> on the <zipped. laughs> There you go. Hey, we're in like Flynn. Nailed it. We all have to use a Dave Jones quote during the episode. So Bill's just hit his quota. Yep. Um, yeah. I'm going to say brilliant at some point. Because I yeah. say that all the time anyway. Oh, it's hooked up under the edge. Oh, no, you just need right. to, yeah, you just close need to that. Yeah. The there you go. Good job. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. Oh, is it a cat? What the? Yeah. Such an idiot. <laughs> Excuse me. We are technical people, <laughs> professionals. Do not try this at home. Okay, there we go. Right. So, so this uh, this is basically the just the display kit. So if you go to the swag store, the Raspberry Pi swag store, and buy just the display without stand, this is what you'll receive. Um, it's 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 easy to assemble. I've heard rumours that I think it's coming fully assembled in future versions. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's just rumours at this stage. It is just rumours. Yeah. Um, but having said that, it takes like five minutes to put together. It's pretty simple. You've yeah. got to be quite careful with the FPC connectors um, yeah. when you're connecting those up. But it's, Say these it's things not drove me completely crazy. I had to reconnect it about four times before I pushed it all the way in. Yeah. Well, you, you, just, you just saw this guy try to remove a layer of Perspex. <laughs> just don't beat me and you'll be fine. Way, so, uh, yeah. you know. So, that's great and all, but one thing you might notice here is the power cables with the GPIO, which are not on there. Let's get rid of that one. Let's get one that's fully assembled. What have we got? Well, here we go. There we go. So, we've got these two connectors there, those power connectors, and they're kind of blocking up the GPIO, which means you can't kind of put hats on it now, which cleverly segues to this thing that's been shining away underneath. We found another use for the black hat hacker. Black hat hacker? Yeah wins again because obviously um, with your Pi attached to the back of the screen you can't get at the uh, GPIO connector but it turns out Black Hat Hacker is kind of a perfect way to bring it to the front. So if you look at the back of the screen there you've got the Black Hat Hacker just plonked on the GPIO curling round back under the screen and then you can play with hats in front of the Pi. And this gave you another great idea didn't it John? It? For, for kind of beginners, the Black Hat Hacker, you need to solder like 40 connectors, 80. Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah. We're going to do a smaller version 120 of this. connectors, yeah. Um, and probably do it fully assembled. So instead of having that, so on the Black Hat Hacker, you basically have a landing for a hat and obviously the connection for the GPIO from the Pi. And then we added another row of pins. And these are great if you're trying to debug something. So you can stick like a scope probe on there or whatever. Or, or connect it off into another circuit. Um, but because of the screen and, and this kind of situation where you can't really run hats on the Pi, we're going to do a smaller version of this that's literally just a like a hat extender, basically. Um, so it can be a lot smaller than the Black Hat Hacker, cheaper, and we'll probably do it fully assembled as well. Mm. Cool. So we've got questions asking how this compares to HDMI Pi. I've already answered that it's um, a slight, well, HDMI Pi is a slightly higher resolution at 1280 by 800. Yep. Um, obviously, this has a multi touch screen in it, and that's uh, capacitive touch, not resistive. So the front is absolutely solid. You're not pushing down on there. Yeah, when it comes to um, uh, touch on screens, you always want to go capacitive if it makes sense for the cost. Um, basically, resistive touch is, is kind of a a bit chunky. I mean, it works. But just just but the one finger or two. And it, yeah, yeah, it's only single finger. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, we want to kind of put a challenge out there to the first person to register all ten fingers on a screen that size. <laughs> if you can do that and prove it to us, then you know we'll we'll send you a sticker or something, or yeah. something good. I'm sure that'll be useful for something like a, a very discordant piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for when you want to extend your piano hat to have kind of two layers and do kind of the prog rock kind of. Think, then yeah, that could be useful. 
Yeah, good. But anyway, back to the HDMI Pi question. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the two biggest things are probably the price. This HDMI Pi the about price is definitely pounds. one of the bigger things as well. So we're, we're doing the um, display with our case for £58 ink VAT. Uh, I should probably just not say ink VAT, really. Most people <laughs> are in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, we're doing the, the, the display with the case for £58. Uh, I think HDMI Pi is £75. 75. It is £75. This is only a 7 inch display. HDMI Pi is 9 inch and higher resolution. Yep. Personally, I prefer this because it's a lot thinner. The HDMI Pi display is, is, is relatively thick. grab my thick. HDMI Pi because we can get Phil, a bit don't of get this. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just wander off said Phil. You can. It's professional. Yeah. Hold Man. on. They won't even notice. Just keep talking. Yeah. Um, yeah, HDMI Pi is quite a lot thicker. Um, <laughs> it's heavier. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, they, they operate in similar ways. I mean, one thing that's quite nice about this is you've still got the HDMI port available. So on the um, because this is using the DSI connector, you've still got the HDMI port. And I don't think there's any reason you can't use them at the same time. There's a, there's a few hacks involved at the moment, but yeah, there's no reason you can't have multiple displays. If it's fundamentally possible, I'd be very surprised if the software well, that isn't sorted out pretty soon. But. Yeah, people have been doing it before with the kind of DSi and the VGA hacks on GPIO. They've made it so you can have that and the HDMI, so there's no reason the DSi and the HDMI can't well, run at the go. same time. Beautiful. Should we go um, to the close-up camera? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. The thing is, that I think the only displays on the Pi you can't have running at the same time <laughs> are composite and HDMI at the same time. It's one or the other. And that's a limitation of the Raspberry Pi kind of processor and GPU. This is Phil's Franken HDMI Pi. This is not one of their SKUs, and that's why it looks so horrible. Uh, <laughs> HDMI Pi normally looks a lot better than this. Yeah. Um, anyway, Phil, take it away. So basically, you can see straight up that the Pi screen is about the thickness of the front of the HDMI Pi, but of course, we've got all this stuff hanging off the back here. So when it comes to depth, they're pretty much for muchness. Yeah, I guess it it's feels really a lot to less heavy. It feels a lot lighter. Not, not even lot just in weight, compact, but kind of but visually, because because of the way the pie is kind of tucked behind. It's like the classic Mac trick. That they make the edges yeah. thin, and then they make the back really wide. <laughs> um, but it works, you know? It works. It yeah. definitely works. So yeah. I think but if it feels you, quite nice If you kind of want to protect your pie on this, then you could use, we've got some standoffs on the site now, or we'll have very soon as, mm -hmm. soon as we go outside and kick Mark. Um, so you can use some of those on the on the kind of hat screws on the back, and then you can use a coupe top yeah. on top of that. Bump it into the so, so basically what we're looking to do is um, probably do an upgrade kit or something. It, it, to be honest, it's not that necessary for most people, mm -hmm. but um, where you can add a second standoff on top of the Raspberry Pi, and then layer a, a coupe lid over the top of it. Mm -hmm. And the main benefit really will just be a bit of protection for the Pi. Yeah. Um, we'll get the labeling on the GPIO, which is nice, yep. that you get on the coupe lid. Um, some people have asked for it, so yeah, it's easy enough. We'll, we'll, we'll sort that out. Um, I personally, I quite like it like this because it's uh, kind of hackery. I wouldn't take it through an airport, but yeah. And if yeah. you kind of, you know, you're working with glitter a lot, mm, yeah, or yeah. or, or, or liquids, yeah, um, yeah, iron filings is a good one. Yeah, so having that little bit of protection might help. Yeah, but they're both good screens, and they are the the best uh, portable screens out there at the moment for the Pi. Certainly for the price. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. I think, I think it's excellent. Because the HDMI it. Pi is pretty good value. You just don't yeah, see much out there. Even the stuff on eBay, which are bare panels, are uh, more expensive. I think that's the that thing. Kind of only, only this and HDMI Pi are really, I guess, what you call finished products without going to like a real classic monitor and mm -hmm. just buying something off the shelf. Um, and they're both kind of kit form, so they, they, yeah, they come from a, a similar heritage. It's technically, so is Pycade if you approach. don't mind a big enclosure. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. By the way, check out Sandy's review of Pycade. It's Definitely amazing. It's um, we'll, in fact, I'm going to put the link to that review on the product page after <coughs> we do this video because it's very good. Yep. Um, so that's I think that's most of what there is to say. Well, about. I think coming up questions? with all the questions today, and the, the other thing you asked is, are we the only place to stock the screen with the case kit? Um, at the moment, yes, because we made it. No, Pi Swag oh, has Pi them as well. Has them. Um, the Raspberry Pi Swag store. Yep. I know uh, Jamie will be stocking them at Pi Hut, and uh, Kiwi in the Netherlands uh, have also got an order in at the moment for the the frames. But I expect they'll be popular. I, yep. I, I think. You know, give but it a we, week. We're desperately churning them out. We'll moment. be selling this on its own as well. 
the, it's already the, on the shop. The kit on its own. Yeah, it's already on there. So yeah, you can buy if you've already bought the screen or you you know you went and bought the screen uh, first thing this morning and didn't get it with a case. Um, the cases are available for ten pounds on their own as well. Yeah, and Sandy's mentioning that Carno have kind of trailed pre-ordered their display as well. Yeah, yeah, that was a bit left field, but looks good. So Carno have basically done a pre-order kind of crowdfunding type thing for a display that is going to be they call it HD and did we work out what the resolution is going to be um, I think they I think they changed the data on the page actually so say 150 pixels per inch you could probably work it out from the yeah size. We, we looked at it but we forgot didn't we was it like 1280 yeah. by 800 or thereabouts I think it was I think it was but I don't yeah I yeah. wouldn't want to commit to that I think yep. it's interesting though because they've kind of gone for the. <laughs> it's almost like a reverse Amiga or Commodore or something, isn't it? They they built the display into the chassis of the computer. Yeah, you know, like the classic computers where the yep. computer and the keyboard were one thing. And you got that, and then you just had a screen. Yeah, yeah. They've kind of done the opposite, so they've got the keyboard, <coughs> and then all of the rest of it is is in the. Guts. Oh yeah, see it's kind mean. of interesting. It's, yes, um, it's ten point one inch and it's four three, isn't it? Or no, sixteen ten, which is yeah. kind of a, a yeah. sane aspect ratio. We had a screen like that for the Pike Aid that was quite nice. It wasn't quite as nice as a kind of 4.3, which is like your old style TV, because that's really, really cool for doing kind of desktop stuff. It just feels the right dimensions. You don't feel like you're trying to, you know, surf the internet through a letterbox. Um, so 16.10, yeah. I mean, just said that, the, the site does say that it's got 2 million pixels, and 1280 by 800 would only be 1 million. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm not. Yeah, not sure. But it looks like they've got kind of the same driver we're using on Pike Aid on the back Which from their preview doesn't show shots. Us to that kind of res, does it? No, no, but it may be that's just a preview because obviously they're not releasing it yet. Um, I think they're talking about it being in stock for Christmas, but maybe they can confirm that. Yeah. Anyway, it looks pretty nice. The the yeah. little keyboard slots in the back. So yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, we quite um, like it. It looks interesting. Yeah, uh, they generally tend to make nice finished products, don't they? Yeah, the brand, their, their brand is strong, uh, yeah. which obviously we appreciate that kind of thing. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, they have it's, strong it's brand nice. food. Some strong brand food. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely worth a mention as well. But when it's going to be available, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. So we touched earlier on the fact you can probably have, as far as we know, HDMI and this DSi screen. And you can probably also have, there's no reason then why you can't have the VGA on your GPIO as well. So that's kind of three screens you could potentially hook up to the Pi there. And we're going to talk about a display that Phil's done some work on making easy to use now. <laughs> to be fair, though, it, was, it was all invalidated. Really? Well, the, Did they kill they, it? They, no, they updated the kernel yeah. that basically fixed all the problems that Phil was working around. Right. So Phil did like a heroic... Herculean effort to get this thing to work with a Pi, but it was always a struggle, right? It was always yeah. a struggle. Basically, for people to get it set up, they had to compile their own kernel modules and kernel from source um, to basically support this display. And that involved grabbing the kernel source and the driver separately, compiling them more. It's, it's something that's not insurmountable for the average user, but it, it's a pain. Uh, so with the release of Astro Pi or Sense Hat, uh, because they added a frame buffer into the product to drive the little pixel display, which is a very cool, very engineer thing to do, and I love it. Um, because they added the frame buffer in, that necessitated some tweaks to the mainline Raspberry Pi kernel, and that means that now, for free, we get the features that we needed to get this display, the um, RoboPeak 2.8-inch uh, USB touch display. We get the tweaks that are needed to make that display run in the kernel, and all we need to do is compile up the, the driver separately, which can then be dropped into your kernel modules folder, dep modded and run, and hopefully, hopefully if I've um, successfully connected this Pi up, I'll be able to get it running. So let's get that in shot. So this is actually the this is the DF Robot RoboPeak USB display. So it runs it runs off a USB on the Pi, which is pretty unique, like a display that's driven directly by USB. Yeah, that's, that's that kind does of cool. mean the frame rate is a little bit low, but it's it's worth it it's for just a display you can put into a project and trail a USB cable to. Yeah, have we tried doing more than one yet? No, but we maybe we'll, maybe we'll try that. I don't know. Because there's four one USB here. on the Pi. There are. I think Plus another three displays. In Seven principle. displays. There is no possible earthly reason you'd want that. <laughs> right. Seven. Mm, I can think of twelve. 13. One for each eye. Flight sim. <laughs> Flight simming. That'd be flight pretty simming. cool, actually. Yeah. Little, uh, little Dinky virtual horizon panel. You get these. Stuff. You get these mini kind of arcade cabinets, such as the Pi Cade. 
Mm. Um, you can do the same, have a miniature flight sim, just using these displays. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we really like these guys, DF Robot. We carry a few of their products. They've got a real, they've got a real aesthetic, haven't they? They, yeah. they do things nicely. Yeah. Um, relatively small range of stuff, or rather, small range of stuff we're interested in, but it, it's all really good. Um, this one I like particularly because when it doesn't have a signal from the the kind of host driver, it, it generates white noise on the microcontroller. So they let it create white white noise, and uh, it just says waiting for signal at the top. It's a it's a cute little. Very cool. Very very cool. It is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we sold quite a lot of these actually. Even when it was a Lost. nightmare to get set up on the kernel, we sold quite a lot of these screens. I think because it's on a cable, it's great for mounting in projects. So you're not kind of attached to the pie like a Pi TFT or whatever. You can just run this off. They've got nice mounting holes in the corner. Um, so it's, yeah, it's quite convenient for for slightly odd setups, I guess, which is nice. Yeah. So shall we switch to the Pi desktop and hopefully bung in some commands and get this display running okay. live on air? Let's right. do that. Over this to is you, guaranteed Phil. to fail. So okay. uh, we booted up the Raspberry Pi. This is the latest kernel, which we can check uh, doing a check on uname. So 4.1.6 is the kernel that has the changes. I believe has the kernel that has the changes for Sensat in. So that's the very latest. If you do your sudo app get update. Type it, Bill. Show them. Yeah. Show everyone at home. Get update and then your sudo app get upgrade. You will actually update your Pi to run this version of the kernel. Um, so the RPI USB display driver will work on Pi 1 and Pi 2. And it's stored at the moment in our GitHub repository, but I'm hoping to make a little script that you can do a one-shot. Um, though people are, are very defensive about these scripts being slightly negligent, I'm hoping to do a little script that will let you do a one-shot install where you just type in a single command, it downloads everything you need, installs it, and you're up and running in no time at all. So let's clone this from GitHub to start with. Hopefully the network cable hasn't fallen out. That would be good. And then we'll change directory and you'll see in here we have uh, modules for the Pi 1 kernel which is the 4.1.6 plus and modules for the Pi 2 kernel which is a 4.1.6 dash v7 plus um, we've got a folder called extra which has got some configs in uh, at the moment it's only got one because I'm currently working on ways to get this screen working alongside the 7 inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen but I'll more on that in a minute uh, so to actually install this, we've got a little install script here. I should just be able to run that. And hopefully, if we switch back and have a look at this, when I hit enter, it'll take a couple of seconds. Any luck? There we go. How easy was that? Wow. Hey. Da -da. That so literally that used to take a week. <laughs> a room full of engineers and a week. So yeah, that's the easy installer for the RoboPeak USB display. Uh, Can you make it display something new? Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. It really <laughs> yeah. feels like the natural follow-on from that. But where's Phil's famous demos examples Phil's folder? Demos. Oh, this is why I've is got the extra say? folder, and I'm not quite finished with this yet. Uh, I've had one of these 7-inch displays on my desk with this connected, and have actually got the offsets and the settings calibrated such that you can run these two displays, the RoboPeak and the 7-inch touchscreen, at the same time. You can use this touchscreen and it'll only affect what's on here. And you can use the main touchscreen and it'll only affect what's on the main touchscreen, which is quite neat if you want to run something off to a separate kind of project and you want to have some touch going on there. But you want to be working on it or developing it on your main screen. So hopefully the next step is to get something like Pi Game running full screen on this display. So you can have your main display where you're developing your code and then your auxiliary display where you've got an interface or you've got a game that you've made that you can use the touchscreen with. So uh, more on that soon. And that's what I've, I've kind of been hoping to get working with this display. Uh, Excellent. That will be in the extras folder <coughs> when it's all up and running and sane. Very nice. Phil does yep. a great job with our software say. stuff. So have we got some uh, tweets as well lined up? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, Yarl, I, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. Um, Yarl Teagland. Yarl Teagland was First just asking, asking. Yeah, I know he visited us, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember. He came around and was very enthusiastic about everything. We like him. He's a super guy. Um, was asking, can we use the, can you use a stylus with seven inch? And I'm trying to remember whether stylus only works with resistive or Ooh. positive touch. Tell you what, Paul's hang on, hang on, hang on, give it a minute. Paul's oh, you got a stylus. Paul's got a. Paul has everything. The touch screen is not oh, yeah. working. No, no working. Phil, you stole it. It's working for me. You stole my stylus. I will get your stylus. Hold Go on. get the stylus. Okay. Make another dramatic. He's on. We're so I'll, I'll run us on it. He'll be back in a minute. Downstairs, onto the deck. 
Oh, oh, and we're just showing off our little live tweet spanner down here. Yeah. At the bottom of the screen, which is hiding behind the laptop. There you go. Mm. Very cool. exciting. Paul's been working on all the graphics. They look awesome. Yeah. We're going to have all kinds of stuff on the show, you know, assuming people come back and watch <laughs> it again. It's very subtle, Phil. Yep. Um, but today we're kind of going bare bones. We, we spent the last week building this set behind us. Um, sorry, building this boat behind us. Um, yeah. I have a stylus. Let's find out. Yes, that works perfectly. So fine. this is right. can, not can we like show a, a pointy stick stylus. This is actually show, show that. a metal and sort of conductive rubber stylus that will specifically work with capacitive touches. Yeah, yeah, you can buy like really cheap ones of these, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're right. by the boatload. You can make China, one so. out of a biro and tin foil, which is something that I did a while back. This this pen. When these first started coming out. This pen is a Kickstarter or something? No, it's just one of those things that engineers have. Okay, this is like an engineer's pen. But it's like just, screwdrivers and everything. Just the stylus bit. You can just get those yep. very, very cheaply. We have gloves with it as well. Gloves with conductive thread on the end. Do, don't they? So you can so use, use those yeah. in cold weather and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only thing we haven't covered. A uh, little stand here has got feet on, uh, which looks like it's going to block off a couple of the USB ports. Yeah, bring it up on the camera. Yep. Let's go. So there you see two of the USB ports completely clear. The two of them are kind of, they look like they're a bit blocked. The reason we've done that is because we wanted a nice robust foot on it. But you can still use those. You can use those with such things as the official Wi-Fi dongle. Wi dongle. Hold on, let's get the Wi-Fi dongle. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you just take it out of that one to put it into this one. Yep. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Nailed it. So yeah, we made sure the clearance was kind of big enough for most Wi-Fi dongles and the like. Uh, Says. Putting it in upside down. <laughs> Good job. That's, that that no, works that the right way up. Down, isn't it? Oh, oh, that, you've just made the USB myth real. This is quantum USB. <laughs> isn't it? Quantum USB states. The right way around and then the right way around. Yeah. yeah. It's really not playing ball. Eve, do you want do you want to add a little detergent? <laughs> <laughs> well, I need it at this rate. Oh, there we go. There we are. Nailed it. Yeah. Oh, we're in like Flynn. Um, so yeah, you've got a little bit of clearance for Wi-Fi dongles and things. Um, yeah. Do nice. you want to show the Flotilla dock as well there? So, yeah, let's, yeah, let's show it. It's gorgeous. So you're going to have a keyboard and mouse, you're going to have wireless plugged in, and then if you kind of back to the recent Kickstarter, oh, February's recent, <laughs> we can just slot that in there. There we go. So that means you can have four things plugged in and useful, even with the foot there. Yeah, the other two ports are not blocked at all. I just can't work out the angle. On this. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, they're perfectly, um, perfectly free. It's just these two that have the foot behind them, but you can still use them. You know, for well, apparently decent the cables. stream crashed and we came back. Did it really? Is oh it? yeah, there it goes. There uh, we're back now. I don't yeah. know what we missed. Sometimes things happen to the internet, mm. uh, and we don't know until twenty seconds later. Yep, which doesn't help. But anyway, you didn't miss. You didn't miss anything <laughs> the important. Ship sank. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. So yeah, we were just showing. I don't know if you missed it, but we were just showing the um, the ports on the uh, on the Pi when it's mounted on the display stand. Uh, two of them are completely available, as in there's nothing in the way at all. But the other two, even though the the foot is kind of there, um, you can still fit in like a Wi-Fi dongle and a decent USB cable, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Kind of handy. <clears throat> yeah. So does that cover everything we need to do today? I think so. I mean, there's other there's other kind of displays out there, and that it all depends on on what you're using them for. Obviously, we've got a big range of Adafruit Pi TFT displays. They do a, a really nice set of resistive and capacitive touch, and different screen sizes, and things like GPIO breakouts. But Adafruit basically always get it right, so yep, you can't fault that. So there's another option which goes on top of your Pi to make a nice little tiny arcade cabinet or tablet. You could yeah, mount it on the back of your TFT. You could. Yeah. Then it'd be like those phones that they briefly had that had the main screen and the little LCD <laughs> on the outside. That's it. Which seemed like a good a good idea at the time. But I, I we were young back then. We were young back then. Yeah. I think that's basically that's basically everything for today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching people. Thank you for um, enduring <laughs> the bilge tank and telling us what we were getting wrong. Yes. Yeah. I feel okay. I feel good about this. Do you? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. I think we're, we're going to come back next week. Yeah. Stronger. Possibly, possibly better. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Bye. Bye.